This is going to be a tutorial video on a program called DxTory, which is a program to record gameplay on the PC. Uh, it's an alternative to programs like Fraps or PlayClaw or Wii Game or Bandicam, um, any number of those. In the past, I've used Fraps and PlayClaw and have recently been using DxTory because I just think I do think it works much better. Um, the main advantages I see with DxTory are the performance, you don't get the frame drops. Uh, nearly to the extreme that you do with Fraps and the other uh, programs. And it also has a lot more options than those other programs, giving you a lot more flexibility. So I opened up DxTory here, and let's go through the tabs and just kind of walk you through what everything does and how it all works. The first tab here, the target, you really don't need to worry about this. This will populate when you open up a game. DxTory records from any OpenGL or DirectX source. So it records basically games. Uh, you can't use it to record things like what I'm doing now, which is you know screen recording. You'll need another program for that, but if you just want to record games, this will definitely do you. So the overlay tab, pretty simple. You just want to check these boxes so that you have the video frame rate displayed. That'll tell you how many frames your game is running in at the moment. And the write FPS. This will tell you how many frames you're actually writing to file. So you definitely need to have these things checked so you can kind of monitor what's going on. And you definitely want to make sure you're always writing as many frames as you think you should be writing. The next tab here is the folder settings. So this is going to be where your video files are recorded to. And so you can add a folder, you can add a drive. Uh, one important point here is is you absolutely, if you're going to try to record anything from the PC, you need two hard drives in your computer at least. You need your primary C drive, which has your Windows and all your programs installed upon it, and then you need a separate, at least one separate drive that you're going to devote to recording and possibly storing those videos and that sort of thing. So I actually have two drives that are devoted to storage and recording. And if I wanted to add, you know, one, I'd obviously just click the little Add button, navigate to it, and add it. Um, you can also, within here, and this is a good idea, you want to benchmark your drive. So you can click that little button, you can run this test, and it'll tell you the write speed of your drives. So happens pretty quickly. This will give you a pretty good idea of how fast your drive is. Um, I can't tell you what these numbers exactly need to be, but I can kind of give you some rough idea. I believe, at the very least, you're going to want to have 40 megabits per second and that would probably be enough to record something like 720p video and 30 frames per second. If you want to record 1080p videos you're definitely going to need 100 plus to be able to do that. And like I said I have two drives here. These are two separate drives. They are not rated together but DxTory also has a very unique feature that allows you to record simultaneously to two drives even though they are not rated. And I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a moment. Um, hotkey, obviously you just need to set up a key to record. You can set this to whatever you want. I use F9. Uh, screenshots, you can also do that with a hotkey. So now we get to the video tab. And this is where it'll probably get interesting, if it's ever going to get interesting. And where, you know, obviously you have the most options and what everyone probably cares about. So the first thing is, I use the codec that comes with DxTory, the DxTory video codec. Um, one other nice feature about DxTory is you can actually record to different codecs. So, for example, you could potentially record to H.264 codec, MPEG-4, uh, DivX codec, you know, any codec you can find on the internet that you can install, you could potentially use it to record uh, in DxTory. I've done a little bit of experimentation, and really, you know, it, it gets a lot more complicated when you start trying to use other codecs, because you start having to deal with a lot more options and compression and that sort of thing, and I just find DxTory codec works just fine. You can open the files in every video editing software I've tried to use and every media player that I've tried to use as well. Um, then you can also click this box here. This opens up some more options about the quality. Um, I've been using high quality, um, but you can go, basically checking these, you know, you lower the quality, but you also lower the um, file size. And so obviously if your hard drive is a little bit slower or you're concerned about file size, you can, you know, lower the quality. Now one important fact is here is, you know, Low quality doesn't mean it's going to just look like shit. I mean, it's still very high quality. So uh, even checking these, I mean, the files are still huge and they're still very high quality. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, that your videos aren't going to look good. Um, file size in DxTory is pretty comparable to Fraps. Um, it changes a little bit, you know, because this is going to be a little more compressed. Um, and 
one thing that a lot of people don't seem to know is that Fraps is actually compressed as well. Um, and DX Tori also compresses your videos. But it's like, you know, it's somewhere on the order of about 50% compression. Um, one other nice feature about DX Tori versus Fraps is that it records your files into a single large file. So anyone that's used Fraps knows that it divides your video files into four gigabyte segments. So your 15 minute video turns into, you know, seven or eight miniature files. DX Tori will have that 15 minute video all in one single file. So for me, that's a nice that's nice because it's easier to keep things organized and you know know what you have recorded and that sort of thing. Um, next frame rate, you can set this to any of these presets. I always record at 30 frames per second because YouTube is 30 frames per second, so I don't see a need to go any higher. You can even manually enter in a frame rate. Um, I've never actually tried that, but I know you I know you can do it. Um, but, you know, obviously the obvious selections would be 30 or 60. Like I said, I use 30 because that's what YouTube is. Uh, next, the output. You want to always have this box checked if you're trying to record file output. That will uh, make sure that it actually outputs to a file. And if you don't have that box checked, it will not actually record your file. And while that seems obvious, the, other, the reason uh, that is there is because you might want to just do direct show output. And I will talk about this more down the line in another video that I'm going to do about how to do live streaming. Um, but basically, direct show, if you don't know what that is, just don't even bother checking it. Just turn it off. That basically has to do with doing things like live streaming, sending a video source to another program. So just don't even bother with it if you don't know what it is. Um, file format. <clears throat> I would say basically everyone is probably going to want to have AVI checked. If you're recording to a single hard drive or if you're recording to a RAID array, just select AVI. Um, I use RawCap and that is because I record to these two drives at the same time. That's basically what RawCap does. If you have two drives that are not RAIDed um, and you want to record to them simultaneously, select RawCap. And what it does is it basically divides the file between the two drives. So the first frame will be written on drive A, the second frame will be written on drive B, the third frame is on drive C. And then there's a tool that I'll show you in a, in a little bit here that will then that you can then use later after you've done recording to rebuild those two separate files into a single video file. Uh, clipping, um, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but this would just be if you wanted to crop what you're recording for some reason, cut out the edges of some sort. Um, obviously I don't use it, I don't know why you would. <clears throat> Options include mouse cursor, that's probably a nice thing to have checked. Um, synchronized video, FPS, I'm not 100% sure what this does, I've never actually used it. I believe it's something along the lines of frame locking, um, but I don't actually know. And I, I don't check and I've never used it. Um, scaling, so this is another nice feature about DX Tori is you can manually enter in how you want to scale your video. So for example, I play in 1080p, but I just record in 720p because I I personally don't watch videos on YouTube that are in 1080p, and I rarely watch even in 720p, to be honest. And I think that's the way most people are, too. And so I just record in 720p because it saves uh, hard drive space, and they're just easier to deal with at that point. Um, but yeah, so that's so anyone that's ever used Fraps knows that you know your options are fairly limited. So if you're playing in 1080p, your only options are to either record in 1080p or to record in 540p, which is actually lower quality than 720p. Um, and another good advantage about doing the scaling, for example, if you only wanted to, some people that record in 540p then just they just scale their video uh, up to 720p. Well, you, you know, obviously the quality isn't quite as good, and also that rescaling of the 540p video to 720 and your editing program while you're rendering is going to increase your render time. So um, basically if you redo the scaling in DX Tori to make it 720p video from the get-go, uh, you're going to actually, your render times are actually going to decrease because you've already scaled it. Um, and then you can also scale it by percentage. I wouldn't really recommend doing this. I would just, you know, enter in the value you actually want. That way you know exactly what you're getting. If you do percents, you're going to end up with some crazy stuff. Uh, so that covers the video portion. Let's go to the audio tab. And so the first thing you want to do is, actually, let me go ahead and clear these off here. On the audio tab here, we have, uh, we obviously want to record sound. So we want to make sure to have record sound checked. And then 
uh, we want to make sure we record game sound, so we'll go to our device and we set it to our default Windows uh, sound device, which for me is this Realtek Digital Output. Um, then set your codec. I use PCM. You can probably use any of these. Um, and then I also set the uh, audio format to 4400 kilohertz at 16-bit stereo. Um, and that seemed to always work for me. Like I said, I don't think I've really even tried any of the other ones, but I don't see a reason why they wouldn't work, although I don't know what these Microsoft ones even are. Um, <clears throat> now, another nice feature about DxTory is it can record multiple audio streams at the same time. So let's say you're trying to do a live commentary while you're playing, so you need a microphone source. So what you would do is you'd come here and you press plus. You'd add a second audio stream. You would then go to device. And you would find your microphone, which for me is this uh, Astro uh, headset. Set your codecs up. Um, I would probably just do them to the exact same thing uh, as you did for Source 1. And now you can do similar, something basically like this in Fraps. Fraps will allow you to record a microphone. Um, however, the downfall of that uh, technique in Fraps is that what it does is, is that it mixes the, 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 all the sound together into a single audio track. Now, what DxTory does is that actually each of these uh, audio sources ends up being a separate audio track when you open it in a uh, editing editing software of some kind, like Vegas uh, or something like that. Um, so the advantage to that is, is let's say you were doing this live commentary and for whatever reason your mic volume was either extremely low or your game volume was extremely high, so the sound is totally unbalanced and you can't hear yourself or you know something along those lines. You did that in Fraps, you're pretty much, you're out of luck at that point. You just got to delete it and do it all over again. Because there's no way to individually change the sound of the game and, uh, and the microphone at that point. But with the X-Story, since they're two separate audio tracks, you could basically, um, you know, do a little bit, of, uh, little bit of audio editing and, you know, increase the volume of your mic and decrease the volume of your game and balance it all out and make it nice. Um, so I think that about covers it on the audio. And these next few tabs aren't all that important. I don't really ever use them. Uh, this one's just setting up screenshots, if you're into that. Uh, this one is advanced settings. The only thing you might want to look into is processing threads, at least in my experience. Um, basically, maybe if you're having, uh, if it seems like you're not recording, um, as if frames are dropping during the recording, possibly try upping this um, <clears throat> or lowering it. Kind of depend, you know, you never really know. It could be, uh, you know, so yeah, move that up and down if you think you're having a problem. Um, I have a quad-core processor, so I just put it on two, and that seems to be fine with me. It might have even been that on default when I got it. And like I said, I've never even used any of the other options. Um, this is just, you know, random stuff about updating, and you've got your, you know, just info about your program and all that sort of thing. And now I just want to show one last thing here about, so I recorded with two separate hard drives, and so here's what it looks like. This is my first hard drive that I record to, and this is my second hard drive that I record to. And so if you look at these first files, this one here and this one over here, what you'll notice is the file names are basically identical, except for at the very end, this one is vr1.rawcap, and this is vr0.rawcap. So these are two files that when basically mixed together will create a single video file. So you know, these files right here, if I just click on them, they don't even play. They aren't going to play in anything. Um, but then if I come back into DxTory and I click on this purple bar here, raw cap conversion, it opens up a tool that will basically build a video file from these two separate files for you. All right. So that opened up after a second. Um, and it'll take a while to open up sometimes. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of crap on here, so I'd have to kind of read all that. But anyway, so to show you a little bit of a preview, um, in fact, you can actually play a preview if you so desired um, and look at what the video actually is. Then you can click on it, and if you wanted to actually uh, you know, build it into a full video file because you wanted to keep it, go ahead and just press build, and it'll go through a little process here, and it'll build your uh, video file for you. Um, and then there's also, if you don't want them, you can obviously just delete them. Um, then there's also another interesting little workaround that I'm not going to go into the details of, but you can also set up a virtual uh, mounted drive, basically, which more or less mounts those files and uh, mixes them together into files for you without actually having to go through that build process. So these, uh, that was what I just clicked on here, and this is my like mounted drive. 
of those two and it shows all those video files here put together already and you could just drop them into the editing software that way uh, I'm not really going to go over this because I don't I think 99% of people that might potentially watch this aren't going to be using this tool to begin with um, if you do want more information about this send me a message and I can tell you all about it um, so I think that about covers it. Um, I tried to go as fast as possible to keep this somewhat short, but it's going to be damn long anyway. If you got any questions, uh, let me know. Um, I guess I should say this does this program does cost money. It's sixteen hundred yen, which for me was about forty dollars uh, several months ago. And I'll obviously link everything in the description. And I believe there may be a free, unwatermarked version that you can download, but I've never actually tried it, so I have no idea. It's an older version for certain. Um, and I'll just say the, uh, the full version you can download as a trial, but you do get a watermark. Um, but at least it's fully functional and it'll give you plenty of time to use it, play around with it and see if it's working for you. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.